Really record. Physics again, ah. That's what it is. Tell teacher release your time, can? Alright? Or if it's, unless it's your fault, you take 10 minutes to walk here, then it's your fault. If not, you ask the teacher to release your time, can? Alright? Like I said, I'll only allow few minutes for all of us to settle down. Um, so, I'm going to give us a quick intro. If you realize on the page 1, 2, 3, that it, uh, there is very little to copy. Really, very little. Which actually means, for some of us, it's a code for you all to fall asleep. Right? But can we agree for this 10 minutes, 10 15 minutes, go to the notes? I'll, I'll refer you to notes later on, but just look up, I will just give a quick overview of the chapter. All right. Okay. In at first, we talk about what is a random variable. You all know what's a random variable, right? We are. I adjust this. You all know what's a random variable? Yes. You want to copy it, maybe to prevent all of us to falling uh, to fall asleep, then prevent all of us from falling asleep, you can copy. Okay? If not, you just listen. What are some examples? Can have attention? This morning the group very good. Eh? The S uh, was it S S S6 and S4, one four three, very good, very quiet. Paying attention is very good. But I hope you all can do the same. Um, quiet doesn't mean they go or sleep, not like that. Or they're really very attentive there. There's some examples of random variables. Score on a die, let's say you toss a die. You don't know what's the result, you'll get different results. You get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I randomly pick one of you, I get a height. That is also a random variable because I don't know it. We have also learned that. Random variables can be divided into discrete random variables, right? Why is it a discrete random variable? It's a score on a die, a discrete random variable, because it can only take on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Fixed number of outcomes. Got it? You can have x equals to... We are your x can only be equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Therefore, it's called a discrete random variable. Another example of a discrete random variable is the number of sixes of pain when you cause a die five times. Right? Yes? Now, you cause a number of uh, die five times, you count number six. You actually can have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But can all of us recall what distribution is this? The one in blue? Wow, don't know. The look on your face. Scary. This tutorial done already, no? I haven't done it, I saw you. That's why, why? We don't like this tutorial. Do your head. <laughs> Tobias, what distribution is this? The one in blue. Who is your lousy man tutor? <laughs> hey, you really don't know unbiased. Uh, no, I forgot. <laughs> Thank you for nothing, you know, this next one. Hey, sir! <laughs> what distribution is this? The one in blue? Binomial, yes. You count the number of successes out of five trucks. It's a binomial distribution. X can only take on. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Got it? Yes? So far, so good. Now, today, we're going to learn what we call a continuous random variable. This is the focus here in steps 3. We're going to talk about a continuous random variable. What is a continuous random variable? An example of a continuous random variable is, for example, the height of a random chosen. Why? Because theoretically speaking, x k 
can be equals to 1.717819341515. X can take on 1.6791234. There can be infinitely many degrees of accuracy. You can have many degrees. Theoretically speaking, I repeat one more time, theoretically speaking. So it's impossible to list out the number of outcomes. For what I'm saying, it's impossible to list out the number of outcomes. Therefore, it's called a continuous random variable. So we must contrast with the list of good. So how's it good? Alright. How do we present the probability distribution of a discrete random variable? Now we've got a discrete back again. Eh? How do we present? Let's say I I I this is a very simple example. Score on a die. Let's say x is a score on the die. Huh? If we have a table, probability x equals to x. 1, 2, all the way to 6. This is 1 over 6, 1 over 6, all the way to 1 over 6. It's very simple, correct? It's very easy to represent the probability distribution of a score on a die. Why? Because I can easily say this is x. This is probability x equals to x. And then I get a 1, 2, oh yeah, we must be, as a math teacher, must be more precise. Cannot be so what, evenly distributed 6. And then I get 1 over 6. This is a cross, cross, cross. Just to mark that, this actually represents the probability distribution of x. Got it? Quite simple. Actually, how did we get there? We calculate like you say, oh, very easy, right? Six outcomes, then there is one or six, one or six, one or six. The other way to look at it is this. The other way to look at it is this. If I toss a die 60 times, I got toss a die 60, I really experimentally toss it 60 times. And I calculate how many times do I get a one? How many times do I get a two? How many times do I get a 3? How many times do I get a 4? How many times do I get a 5? Do we expect always you will get a 10? Not really, right? You expect 10, but you may not get 10. Sometimes you get 8, sometimes you get 7, sometimes you get 12, sometimes you get 13, right? Follow? Experimentally. Maybe sometimes you get 8, sometimes you get 10, sometimes you get 12. Okay, just to make my life a bit easier. And then you get this one. Hey, correct, ah? Uh? Hey, wait, wait, sorry, sorry, Ah. Then you will get a wait, a eraser. Then you get here. All right. Sometimes you you do. Hey, what's this? How about this one? Okay, man, so sometimes you get 8, sometimes you get 10, sometimes you get 12, you get 10, 12, 8, again, it all add up to be 16. Example, yeah, 23 equals 0. Again, example, you sometimes you get but, but just for simplicity's sake, maybe you get all this. What I'm going to do is, now I'm doing it 60 times. What if I do it 600 times? If I do it 600 times, I expect this kind of values. I may expect not all to be 100, but close to 100. Follow what I'm saying? Because if you do 600 times, you expect, oh, maybe 90, uh, 110, blah, 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 close to 100. So what's good? So what's good? But now I do 600 times. But can I do, can I throw a die? say 6,000 times, 60,000 times, 6 million times, also can, right? Yes? If I do it enough times, let's do it this way, I will get, if I put two more zeros behind, I get two more zeros behind, I get two more zeros behind, two more zeros behind, I would expect all of them to be around here, around 10,000, correct? 10,000 each. From here to here, what do I do? Can you observe that this 10,000? If I take 10,000 divided by 60,000, 
I will get one over six. Correct? So as I toss enough times, then the actual frequency divided by the total frequency is actually the probability of the happening. Does it make sense? Let's see one more time. Huh? If I toss enough times, I let the frequency tend to infinity, I let frequency. Oh, yeah. Two island. Never mind, never mind. I let frequency tend to infinity. And then I take this to the frequency divided by total frequency, I will get uh, I will get this probability one six. Got it? That's actually how you get probability. You do it enough times, then the, 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 this value you actually get the probability. Now that's what discrete random variable. Let's move a bit faster. Now what we want to do at the end of the day is do the same for continuous random. But actually, it's not easy. Why is it not easy? Because if you, let's say now I, I do it this way. Now I sample 100 students. It is quite impossible to say x equals to, it's quite impossible that I get two values exactly the same. Theoretically speaking, some of you may say, hey, my, my, my height is, uh, the same height as my friend, eh? uh, 1.74, he also 1.74, but actually, no, his is 1.74, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you know what I'm saying? And yours is 4, 1.74, da, 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 da. So, theoretically speaking, they are not the same. So, we're not going to do that. How do we classify them in uh, something like that? We're going to use what we call, start the letter H. Right. Is a histogram. Very good, histogram. Histogram. For discussion's sake, let's use, suppose all the data lies between 1.5 and 1.9. Okay, if your friend is sleeping, just wake them up, just bear with me. This is boring, but, but no choice. Okay, so let's for discussion say all the 100 students lie between 1.5 and 1.9. That means they are not outliers. Oh, who is below 1.95 here? Sorry. Okay, let, let, it's okay. Lah, oh. Don't get offended. Lah. Oh. So, oh, no, no, okay, I don't even want 1.9. Oh, so Aaron cannot. <laughs> so, 100 students, I'm not going to say if it's 1.71, I will classify them here. Count as 1, and I count as 2, count as 3, then count as 4, count as 5, like that. So let's for discussion say after I, I, I sample 100, I get 30 here, 40 here, 30 here. Example, you know, huh? Remember, uh, what I want to do in the end is to obtain a probability kind of table here for continuous random variable. Here I can easily do, but here how do we do it? Let's begin with the end in mind. Thank you. Can have attention, please. But you look, look up. I don't quite like this histogram. Why? Because the width is too big. Okay, the width is too big. Can I break it up and say, okay, now I have 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, and 1.8. I break it up 1.55, 1.65, 1.75, and now I have six strips. Okay? Can I? If I still sample the same 100, I may get some something that is that looks a little bit better, like this. I may get 12 here, I may get 18 here, I get 20 here, I get 20, I get 18 here, I get 12 here. Can or not? Can I? I just break it up into smaller, quite possible. I think we follow the trend now. Remember, 
we want to find the theoretical, the probability. Now, how do we get the probability? We sample enough. Remember here, we sample enough. We let the frequency tend to infinity. So that means I sample enough, but on top of that, for con continuous random variable, I not only sample enough, I will let the strips I break into very, very, very tiny strips, such that I see I get a smooth curve. So two things I'm going to do. From here to here, the first thing I'm going to do, I let frequency tend to infinity. The second thing, I'm going to let the width tend to zero. That means this width. Does it make sense that I will therefore then get a smooth curve? Okay, not so smooth, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> Okay, I don't have a method. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to say it, Tony? <laughs> now, then you get a smooth curve. Got it? Yes? On top of that, there's the thing I want to do. If, if I divide, these are all frequencies, right? The vertical axis is frequency. Oh, sorry. If I divide the frequency such that the total area <coughs> equals to one, how do I do that? Can have attention this one? Important uh, example. Uh. Can we very quickly calculate the area of this? This area is Uh, 12 times 0 0.05, 18 times 0 0.05, 20 times 0 0.405, 20 times 0 0.05, etc. So it's 100 times 0 0.05, la. correct? Because total frequency is 100, la. correct? Then you will get 5. Correct? You get 5. All the best. Okay. Um, this area is fine. Can we do this from here to here on the top? Can I have attention? On top of letting frequency tend to infinity, on top of lens, and on top of breaking this down into tiny strips, I also divide the least frequency, divide by the number such that area equals to 1. I ensure that area equals to 1. When I do that, this is a special curve called the probability density function. This is how I describe a continuous random variable. I repeat one more time. Huh? For a continuous random variable, this is what is usually always a curve, such that area under the curve must be equal to 1. So, let's refer to the notes now. All that I say is here. Uh, now, I need all of us to look at page 2. This is what I've said. The total probability under the probability density function must be equal to 1. Make sense? Now, if now take a look. And then this is 1.5, this is 1.8. Can we look back here? For discrete random variable, if I want to find probability x less than or equals to 4, how do we find? We take 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6, we get 4 over 6, right? If I want to find probability the height of a randomly chosen student to be less than 1.7, what do we do? We take 
area under the curve from 1.7. This area, this area is actually this area is actually probability x between 1.5 and 1.7. Area represents probability now. Why? Because total area is 1. Make sense? So, second point here, area under the graph is actually probability. So let's look here. Oops, sorry. Area now represents probability. Got it? Yes? Good. Okay. Very, very dry. 